Hi, let's get started. So I'm gonna do this center first. I left it blank so I could demonstrate it. But otherwise, this is where I would actually start the design. You'll just probably want to skip this if you already know how to do a woven wheel rose. I don't know if I'll complete the whole thing. But we start with five straight stitches converging in the center. We come up near the center, not at the center. And then we start weaving over and under. So you'll see why it's important to have an odd number of spokes. And you can see how it's a little tricky because I already have all this other stitching done. So I would definitely recommend doing it first. So you're not, oops, did I skip two? I sure did, look at that. So if you do that, you can just go back under. And try again. And you're just gonna keep going until you have covered your spokes. So I'm almost at a floss here. I'm gonna go ahead and go down and get this anchored. And then what I would do is just oops, come up with another strand and continue going around. I think you guys get the idea of what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna move on. So this next leaf here is gonna be a fish bone. So we start at the top, come down. And if you want, you can go all the way down to the bottom with these stitches. I usually don't. If you do, you'll get uh, more padding at the bottom and you'll also use more floss, which is fine. I guess I should tell you, or kind of show you more what I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm trying to pull this little fuzz back through. So what I mean is going all the way to the other edge of the leaf when you do that crossover. Like that. And what that's gonna do is just build up more layers. So the base of your leaf is gonna be a lot thicker, which is kinda cool. Ow. <laughs> I'm not used to doing in a stitch like this, so I definitely had my finger in the wrong place. All right, I'm gonna go back to not going all the way down to the bottom. So I, I'm just, you know, I'm coming up on the edge, crossing over the center line. And going back and forth so that that center line kind of looks braided. not going to get too deep into the instruction on these more basic stitches. Uh, but I definitely want to show you how to do some of these different ones. So here we have another woven wheel rose. This one's smaller. And then we're going to do, we have some detached chain stitch. I'll show you. Come out at the base, make a loop, go back down same hole and then you're gonna catch that loop by coming up here so in this instance you can see where my guidelines are if I actually come up at the very tip here um, my finished loop is actually gonna extend uh, the thickness of the floss away from there right and because it's already pretty tight there I am gonna go back a tiny bit like in theory, the thickness of the floss 
so that when I make my loop, I'm not touching here. And then when I come in for my anchor stitch, I'm just going back down, I'm covering that guideline. This was my, um, my first try at the printed fabric. So if you have the kit or the PDF, I've altered the, uh, the design so that these loops are a little bit smaller just because this space is so tight. There we go. Those are detached chain stitches. Okay. We've already done the woven rows. I'm going to skip the other two. These are fern stitches, so they're just made using a series of straight stitches or back stitches, kind of. <laughs> I kind of treat everyone like a triplet of stitches and just do the three and then move up to do the next three. Etc. So from here, I would, oops, I would jump up to the next. Well, I would I would work both sides of this little piece and then jump up to the next flower, which again is another woven wheel rose. So we're gonna skip that. If you don't like woven wheel roses, you can you know fill the circle with French knots. You can fill the circle with different kind of roses, chain stitch rose, stem stitch rose, whatever you feel like. Okay. So those are the fern stitches. For these leaves, we're just doing satin stitch, but considering it's such a small shape, I mean, we're lucky if we get three stitches in there. So we're doing one down the center, one a teeny bit lower. I'm actually gonna go in the same hole, so it's not really not technically a satin stitch, is it? I'm not sure what it would even be called, but uh, I guess we'll just say use use some straight stitches to fill the shape, and then we just have these fun little straight stitches on the side like this. Excellent. So now we're going to do these stitches here. These are going to be wheat ear stitch. So we're going to, I'm actually starting at the top and just using straight stitches here. And then I'm going to go down to the base of my next V and make a detached chain stitch that let's actually I guess you could call this doing like a reverse chain stitch we come up through the hole at the base of the next V we're weaving under this V that's where our loops gonna be and then go back down where we originally came up like that and then we'll make another V. You'll notice I made these Vs a little bit longer in your pattern or printed fabric because they get a little lost when they're this small. Don't want them getting lost because that's like the fun of the stitch. This might be my new favorite stitch. It's so cute. I really don't know what else to use it for, but it's fun here for the snowflake. I actually have horrible news. I just realized that 
I remember when I stabbed my finger, well, I stabbed it enough to make it bleed, and guess what I bled on? <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get it out of the fabric. <laughs> or I'll be adding embellishments to my hoop to cover it. <laughs> I guess, let's see, what would, what would I do? I could add, um, I could add more stitching. I could just add some random French knots. It's just a little spot, so it probably would be covered by a French knot. Or I could go have some fun with beads or sequins. <laughs> Luckily, this kind of holiday festive hoop uh, lends itself well to such embellishments. Um, it's a snowflake, right? I can add random, random pretties around it and it's not going to look too bizarre. So if, if you're from the future and you're... <laughs> And my hoop has weird little <laughs> additions to it. It's because it's covering up blood from when I pricked my finger. Pretty normal embroidery stuff, huh? All right, so this is the wheat ear stitch. You can see it just continues down, and you're going to do it on both sides. Up here and down here. Uh, and so as far as order of operation on this, like where to start, like, like I said, I started in the center and kind of worked my way out <laughs> and did a little jumping around. I, you know, I tried not to carry my floss too much, especially on this version with the lighter colored fabric, because you don't want to see all those jumps from behind, from the front. <laughs> so just be conscious of that. Some of these you have to start at the end and come forward. So, for example, like, you know, this stitch, I like to go in this direction. This stitch, I like to go in this direction. This one's another one, actually, that you have to start at the top and go down, which is why I went this way first, because we'll go up, over, down. So, next we're going to do some buttonhole right here. This one you get a little bit of freedom to decide what exactly you want to do here. Um, you can have your buttonhole stitches really long. You can have them really short. Uh, yeah, it's up to you. I mean, you can fill the space however you like. So, and really you may want to just like sketch in little lines like in pencil or something that you'll cover. I'm just going to go freestyle here and see what happens. None of mine look the same, like the angles, the angles of this stitch compared to the line it came out of aren't the same, uh, the lengths aren't the same, the number of stitches I used aren't the same, and if, if you look at my finished um, snowflake, you'll notice you can't tell, so don't stress too much. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do to make sure that I get a nice point here. Is I'm actually gonna come and like anchor the shape here. So I know that this, this becomes a nice straight line. If I just go ahead into it, I have a chance of uh, making this more rounded edge here. So here's the tricky part, because I actually need to come up right where I went down so I'm going to fake it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually skip up here. Hopefully this isn't like making this way too hard. All right. So since I wasn't talking before, so you're going to come up <laughs> the start of your line, go down where you want your, what should we call these? Spike? Go down where you want your spike to end. Actually, I don't want it to go that far out. Leave a loop so that when you come up along your guide line a stitch length away, you're going to catch that loop. Now, depending where you come up here, you know, your spike will be at a different angle. So if you want your spike, you know, straight, uh, what would that be, perpendicular? Or if you want it to be a little bit angled down or a little bit angled up. So, you know, you can kind of play with it. 
see how exactly you want yours to look. All right, so then you pull tight and then you do the same thing. Go down where you want your spike to end. Come up on your guideline, catching that loop and pulling it. Down at the end of the spike. <laughs> up on my guideline. I'm back down. So because I'm doing the I'm doing it as like four different lines, I'm making sure that the final stitch ends on that corner. So I'm coming up at the corner and then pulling tight and then I'm going to do my anchor. Okay. So it looks like I get about 3 stitches in before that end stitch. So now I'm going to go back over here and finish up on this side, down, up on the guy line, So again, you can make these even tighter if you want to do more spikes. You can see I'm not paying too much attention when it comes to the direction of my spikes. Some of them are kind of straight out. Some of them are pointed down. Let's see. I just try to make sure I have the same number on both sides. Although, in this case, I feel like I could fit another one there. I'm kind of looking at the other ones I've done to see what would match best and actually it look fine either way. So I'm just going to go ahead and go down at the top and then finish by coming back here and doing our last leg. Looks like I'm out of room, <laughs> so I'm only getting two there. So I'll go ahead and go back down. Awesome. So I am going to, let's, I'm right here, so I'm gonna jump over here. You know, if I was really doing this, I'd probably work this and then kind of jump over. Okay, so this is chained feather stitch or chained feathered stitch. I've seen it both ways. Um, so you can see the guideline consists of this zigzag line and these dots. So the dots are where you come up for a detached chain stitch. So we're going to come up at the dot, make our loop, go back down at the dot. Hopefully. <laughs> and then come up on the guideline. Pull. And then... Instead of anchoring right here, we're anchoring like a stitch length away. So it's like a detached chain stitch with a long anchor. Okay. And then we come up to the right. We do the same thing. But this time, when we anchor, we're going to come up here on the guideline at the base of the previous stitch. Now, you can aim for the same hole. It doesn't have to be though, because when you do this, you're gonna kinda be hiding. You won't actually be able to tell either way. So do what works best for you. So then I come down to the end here of this zigzag. And I go to the left. Now, it's pretty tight here. So if you wanna go like a little bit above your Dot. That's what I'm going to do because it's just, they're so tiny. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. If you're having a hard time like fitting all these stitches, definitely move down to fewer strands of floss. So here I am, I'm going up right near the base of the previous stitch. Pull and then go down at the base of this zigzag. So this one, it's interesting because I 
it looks like it's all connected, but really it's just a bunch of detached chain stitch stitches with, what well, I guess, can we call these tails? Uh, detached chain stitches with long tails organized in a zigzag so that they look like they're all connected. And they're cute. Down. down so for the last one I just uh, like for some some references I saw it finished like this but I ended up adding an extra detached chain stitch to the bottom but with just a regular anchor nearly out of floss I'm playing floss chicken I'm gonna come up pull and then just like tuck this under here. We don't want to get in the way of this situation. So, all right, just like that. So I'm just gonna keep moving up this way. So next is this cute little stitch here. This is called a tulip stitch. So it's, you know, basically what you just did. You start at the top do a little loop to make a detached chain stitch. I'm trying to get in the same hole. But I have a knot back there, so I'm also trying not to pierce my knot, which is a case for not knotting your floss. Okay. Here we go. Detach chain. With a long anchor. Like that, like we just did a bunch of. And then you're just going to come in here and do two straight stitches, which are supposed to look like the leaves of our tulip. My strand of floss is way too long. I'm getting some knots and weirdness. So there we go. Why that gets its own name, I don't know, because it's really just a detached chain stitch and some straight stitches, but I like the name Tulip Stitch that so will go with it. All right, as we move up, then we get to a Lazy Daisy. It's gonna be more detached chain stitch. This, I believe, yeah, this is the last of the detached chain stitch. So these ones go up, do your loop, pull, oops, don't run into the camera, <laughs> and then just anchor your stitch with a tiny stitch at the top, just like that, okay? So you're going to do five of those in a circle. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. If I'm going too fast on all these, please let me know. I'm trying to spend more time on the, the newer stitches. Um, let's go ahead and do this fly stitch. So fly stitch is gonna feel like a chain stitch, but it's got an open base. So we come up, instead of going back down in the same hole, we're gonna come down, back down here but we do leave a loop like we're doing a chain stitch and we come up on the line we're going to come up where that intersection is pull and then repeat so we go down here these guidelines should make it pretty pretty easy so this is feather stitch
when you finish, you're gonna catch that last loop and just go down. I have it so that it actually goes down into the lazy daisy like that. Ta-da! Hopefully those guidelines will really help. All right, so here we're doing some fishbone. I'm gonna start on this one just because the angle works better for me. So we start at the top. Remember, we already did these down here. Start at the top, go down the center line. These are so teeny, teeny, tiny. You're not gonna get very many stitches in. So I'm coming up on the right at the guideline, going down to the left of my guideline, or my, excuse me, of my center line. Coming up on the left on the guideline, crossing over and going down on the right side of the center line. Oh, there's one of those knots. You can get those if your floss is too long. That was a that was a good one to get out. It wasn't too tight yet, so they don't always do that. <laughs> if yours doesn't do that, you're probably gonna have to cut it out and oops, try to fix it. All right, I'm gonna fit just one more little stitch in here, just like that. If you want, you can fill that with something else. If you want to do like satin stitch or something, go for it. All right, so next we're gonna do something called a woven cross. That's what those pluses are. So you can you can start either way. I'm gonna just start on the horizontal first. And it doesn't matter if you go from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna go the vertical. And for this, again, it doesn't matter. Top to bottom, bottom to top. And then you just have to do every other one. So like if you do the top to bottom one first, you you know, do the side to side one next. Oops. Sorry, it's my tail. Okay. So now I'm gonna do a second layer. I'm I'm trying to come up through the same hole and go down the same hole. Best I can. Now I don't want these like too tight. I'm not pulling like crazy tight. I'm keeping like a little bit of give in there. So here's where something actually happens. So I'm going to come up on the top. Okay, now what I want to do is I want this piece of thread to go over <laughs> the top thread under the bottom thread. So the way I do that is I use my needle and I lift up. You see, I'm lifting up that top one, and then I kind of do a U-turn. I'm, I'm using, I don't know if you can see my finger back here, it's kind of puffing it up so it, it makes it easier for me to turn around without re-stabbing anything. Kind of scoop like that. But you can see what I've done here. So that when I pull through, you get this like cool woven situation and then you go back down here. So let me do it again. So I'll do it the opposite this time. We'll go up and down. Side to side. I'm going to do down to up just to make it even more random. So you can see it does not matter. Okay, so then here's the last one where something actually happens. Come up hopefully around the same hole. And then I want to go over the top one. I can't actually see over there, so this is going to be a little tricky. <laughs> I 
Maybe I need to do it from down here so I can see. Okay, so I'm on top of the first one. Nope. Okay. I guess it was a mistake to do it this way because I can't see from this angle. Nope. Okay, I'm losing my body. Here we go. I get them all? See, I want to make sure I got all six strands. I, th I think I, or excuse me, three strands in this case. I think I did. That looks okay. All right, cool. So then I go back down. So that's the only thing you have to worry about is if you maybe only grab one strand or two strands. Make sure you get them all. All right, next is French knots up here. Yours will just have a single dot because you can see when there's three dots, they're just way too close to that woven, what is it? Woven cross. I had to write all the names down because I can't remember them. All right, so it's up to you if you want to do uh, three teeny tiny French knots or one big French knot. I guess, I guess I'm gonna go for three tiny ones. So uh, you come up, do a loop, go down near, not in, but near where you just came up, pull the floss, the knot, the wrap, I guess, down to the bottom of the fabric, the base or surface of the fabric pull through, roll it up, wrap, place, surface of the fabric, pull through. Okay, I can kind of only fit two there. So we'll jump over to these little diamonds. We're gonna do satin stitch on the diamonds. So I like to start in the center so I know my stitch direction is already established. And I'm just gonna go down one side. So because my, my guidelines are pretty much covered, but my diamond looks kind of flat, right? Well, it looks so, actually it looks fine. Um, <laughs> it's up to you if you want to come in and do like super teeny tiny stitches over here to make, and give a little bit more of a definition on the edges where those angles are. But this can be dangerous if you put them in the wrong spot. So use with caution. Like like that one. <laughs> I feel like I came up okay, but I went out a little too far. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna try to fix it without making it worse by adding another stitch. This this could go either way here. All right, I think I saved it. That looks really nice, actually. Gold star. The feather twig stitch, which I just had to look at the name because I just, I don't know why it's called feather twig, but we'll go for it. It is like a feather, and I guess it has like a twig on it, so I guess it makes perfect sense. Okay, so it's going to start just the same. I'm trying to keep even across so you can see, although I've already made this stitch too big. Okay. Work in progress. All right, so it starts the same, but here's where it gets weird. I'm gonna go down in the middle, and you can make it the same length as these. It kind of looks better to make it a little, a little bit longer. It's so coming up a little bit above. Now hold on here, right? Because if we just, if I don't hold on, this is gonna happen, right? We don't want that. We're gonna hold on because we're gonna use this loop here in a second. Okay. 
Now I'm coming up underneath here, basically where you would go down to anchor a fly stitch. So I came up just below. I'm going to wrap here, kind of like I'm doing a French knot. I'm just transferring so I can pull. And I'm going to pull down. And that little twist is going to secure this stitch. Okay? And I'm going to keep going. So now I'm going to go to the right. So you can see I'm just kind of paralleling what I'm doing over there, but I'm just adding that extra stitch with the twist. So there's the basic, and then I add my long stitch up here, the twig, I guess. And then to secure it, I'm coming up below, doing a wrap and then pulling. You can see this time I did the wrap while I was still, I hadn't pulled the um, needle up all the way. You can see it didn't really matter. Let's do it again. So this time I'm coming up on the left. Hope you can see how I'm paralleling the feather stitch, why it's still considered a feather stitch. Down. Up. So this time I'll do it all the way out so you can see it doesn't make a difference. So I just wrap and then kind of pull this way. I don't know if it matters. Here I need to do some teasing because something happened. My strands separated a bit. Okay, that's all right now. And I'm back over here. So it just it it adds that extra little twig. Adds a little kind of interest with this twisty, knotty-looking thing <laughs> that is created. I'm going to keep the needle under this time. I feel like, well, I guess this is a little neater when you do it like that. You don't have all that extra floss in your way. All right, and then the last one would go here. Now, I, I actually forgot what I was doing at the beginning of this stitch. I was like, wait, how do I do it again? So don't worry if you can't remember. So I'm just going to end it by going down. Like that. Uh, it's one of those ones where like I have to look it up because I'm like, wait, how did I do that again? <laughs> okay, so if you just came to learn the feather twig stitch, I had to look again. <laughs> We're done. If you're doing this snowflake pattern and you want to see what's going on here, this modified feather twig stitch, keep watching. Uh, basically, I think this stitch is really cool, but it was a little bit too wide for what I was doing here. I didn't want it so wide with these gaps. So I kind of modified, I am all tangled. I modified it a little bit. We'll, we'll call it a, um, I don't know. I'm going to say a, a twisted feather twig stitch, but I don't even know if that would be the right word. All right, so let's start. Starts the same. down do our wrap I do two pull sometimes I feel like I kind of to pull it both directions to kind of get it and you might need to like use your finger to kind of get in there and make it stay Then, so I still started going this way. See how it, uh, we kind of have this base zigzag, right? We're going to keep that base zigzag. What we're changing is the direction of these two stitches. 
So I'm still gonna go here, and maybe if I draw it, it'll help. So you can see our base. So I'm gonna go doot, 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 doot. But instead of coming up here, like I would do regularly, <laughs> I went over here. I know. Why would I do such a thing? But what it does is it keeps it keeps the stitch skinnier. So what you can think of, so come over here like you're going to do it. And then what I did as a guide, I just went horizontal out from it like that. And try to keep it under our initial um, width, I guess you could call that. So still going to do the same thing. I like that. Here's my twig. So it's it's supposed to be what in the center of these two. So I'm picking here. Ish. <laughs> and then we will do our wrap. And pull. Okay. So hopefully you can see. <laughs> these are related, I promise. I am just changing the direction. I'm keeping the same base of zigzag, okay? Or you could always think of it as I'm starting to the left, but my initial uh, stitch goes to the right. I could think of it that way. I don't know what, I'm not sure either makes a whole lot of sense, <laughs> but hopefully in watching this, you'll see, and then you'll see the guidelines on the pattern. All right, so here we go. The left, I'm gonna go out just in a parallel, horizontally there. Hopefully you'll see when you look at the guidelines, what's going on. So originally I had drawn actual line guidelines, but because of the this twisty thing that happens, sometimes the stitches aren't like perfect. And so you can't always match the guideline like you want. It does help if you really push that twisty bit tight to the fabric there. All right, so here's my next one. I kind of shrank these stitches at the bottom, didn't I? <laughs> the ones at the top are really big, and then this one's like, oops. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. Let's try that again. Only so much talking can happen. All right. I forgot to do this stitch. So I'm kind of, you know, I drew it so it was up here, but that's just like gonna be too tight. So I'm coming down a little bit. And then going down. Doing this. Let's just do one wrap on this one. So that's fine too. If you want to do one wrap instead of two, I did two on all of these other ones. But here you can see, I think, I think I actually do like it with two wraps better. But you don't have to, is what I'm trying to say. All right, so here's my last one. Here's my twig. Come up from my wrap, holding that knot down. This time I'm holding it down like I'm doing a French knot. I don't know if that's gonna help or not. Not really. Maybe it did, I don't know. But again, like I like to kind of, you know, pull it both directions and you can kind of push it down and that'll help. And then to finish, you would just go down to anchor. Excellent. So if I edited my video correctly, you just watched me do this feather twig stitch on a different hoop. I would definitely recommend getting a, a scrap hoop, scrap fabric <laughs> set up so you can practice uh, ahead of time if you would like to. Maybe trying the original way and then trying my weird twisty way. If you try it and you are just not having it, you don't like it, it's confusing, don't worry about it. You know what you can do instead? Just turn these into a bunch of straight stitches. It's going to look almost the same after all that work. 
<laughs> so you have my permission, you can fake it. If you don't wanna fake it, here we go. Now we're doing it much smaller. So I'm starting like I'm doing a regular fly or because we would say feather stitch since we know we're going to make a chain of it. All right, we're going to go down at the top to make our twig. Come up at the base where we would usually tack down our fly stitch, do our double wrap like we're doing a French knot, pull it out. Hopefully it pulls nice and smooth. <laughs> Just like that. So I'm, I'm pulling it up a little bit, I'm pulling it aside a little bit, just trying to get that wrap close to the, the surface of the fabric. Now, you probably have noticed that your fabric and or pattern does not look like this. It looks like this. So I'm gonna demonstrate on here when we're done. Basically, I replaced all these lines with dots. And the reason for that is, let's see, you probably can't, I don't know if you can see it, but um, uh, for here, for example, you can see the guideline underneath just because of the way, you know, when you do this wrap, it can kind of change where, um, kind of the direction that this stitch is made. And so I didn't want you guys to have to worry about covering those guidelines. So I turned them into dots. So yes, well, let's continue here and then I'll show you on the dots. So there we are, pretending like we're just doing feather, and then we decide we're doing a twig. And we come up, and we do our wrap. Now, you're gonna ask, oops, one, two. Which direction do you do the wraps? Now, I tried it both directions to see if it made a difference, and I couldn't see a difference. If you want to practice on your scrap fabric to see if there's a difference when you do it, please do. For me, I just don't overthink it. I do that the natural way that it feels right to me. And I just do that consistently. Okay, here's my twig. Pop up here. Underneath, wrap. Oop, what the heck? Who are you? <laughs> oh no. Well, here we go. Sometimes it gets messed up. All right, I'm gonna keep going. See, oops, no, that's not how I keep going. I keep going over here. Doing my feather. Down on the twig. And come up at the base to do our wrap. Okay, that just felt better. It felt so much better. Like, I don't know if you heard it, it was all smooth. This one was all rough. Like, there's like some tiny knot in the floss or something that's catching me up. We're just gonna move on. I'm over it. All right, and then here's our next feather. Catch it at the bottom like normal, and then we go back up, adding our twig. Come from beneath. Catch this loop. Pull. Sure, it's make sure that twist is all the way down. If if it's not, it kind of you can see it, it'll pull the knot over. It doesn't look as good. If you do just a single wrap, that knot or that um, twist will be smaller. Maybe I'll do a single wrap for the the demo on the other fabric, so you can see the difference. 
And again, if you're just like, no way, not happening, just do some straight stitches. I promise it'll look fine. This is just if you want to try something new. So at the end, I just like cheated. I'm just like, all right, I'm done. I'm going down here. Uh, and then down here, you can just fill in with some French knots to hide anything going on. So French knot, we're just going to, I'm going to do a double wrap. Put my needle down near where I came up. Let's see. I'm trying to make it so you can see. <laughs> Pull that. Whoops. Whoops. Pull that wrap down to the surface of the fabric. Pull the needle through, get the nice pop. There we go. Okay, so here we are on the other fabric. And all I did was just remove the lines and I kept the dots as guidelines. So what you might want to do is come in with like a an erasable pen of some kind. Make sure you test it on your fabric first so you know it's going to come out. Um, and you can draw in where you're going if you want. Don't use this pen though because it bleeds. It I, I tested it on the corner and I swear it didn't bleed. All right, I got my purple pen out. <laughs> my my air soluble one. All right, so I'm just gonna put in. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't really work there. There it did. Okay. So there's my guidelines like that and then my zag like that and then like that and then zig like that and zag like that and then just go down okay so if you want to draw that in you probably should because otherwise you might get confused, as I almost did just now. And you don't want to get confused while you're actually doing the the stitching, because it's confusing enough, right? Alright, so let's do it one more time here. And I'll do... Oh, I did not... I did not get my fabric very tight in this hoop. Hopefully we won't regret that. All right, so I'm just I'm coming up with that dot, going down at this dot. Oops, excuse me. And then I come up with the base here. I'm just gonna do with a single wrap, just so we can see what that looks like. It's easier, much easier to pull through. But I feel like it's not as secure, like. Let's see, I think I have like a single ply, it's not, it's kind of separating a little bit. Okay, so now I'm aiming for, this is where I'm going to do, uh, where I'm going to come back up. But we go down over here, up on that dot, down for my twig. Up at the base. Single wrap. Pull through. So you can see it's like way up there. I'm trying to just tease it a little bit. And I'll come down. base down for the twig back up at the base and we'll do oops I feel like I'm upside down do a single wrap is that like I said, I feel like I'm upside down all of a sudden. One wrap. Etc.
Okay, I'm gonna stop here. Rewind and watch again if you need to see it again. I just wanna show you what it looks like if you just do straight stitches. So I'm gonna go over here, so it would be, I mean, really you could connect them any way you want, but if you want it to be in the same, um, pattern, I guess, as if you were doing the feather twig, this is what it would look like. So it's confusing here, right? Because it looks like, well, I have, I have this dot really close, but actually I'm supposed to go down. So I'm going to go up through here. Down here. And these ones I'll just go out and down. So it kind of turns into a funky fern stitch, you could call it. So we're doing funky fern stitch or funky feather twig stitch. Alright, so here's where it's weird again. I'm going to go way down here. This actually looks a lot cleaner. Come on. My magic trick. If you do this version, it really doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom. This right? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> Even I'm confused. And it helped me to stitch them all at the same angle, like you know, rotate your hoop around, so you're always doing it towards you. I'm trying to figure out if I had something wrong. <laughs> I can't even tell. Oh, I see. It's because I'm supposed to... Oh, well. Okay. So my final one is kind of at a weird angle, but whatever. It's all good. <laughs> do what you need to do. And if you want to come in and add like an extra spike or something, you can to fill in the gap or just put in French knots at the bottom. That's it.